Jeff Snyder here, and it is my last shift at the Kia Telluride Supper Ooh. Suite, and I am here with the team behind the last shift. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming in. Um, so let's start with uh, director Andrew Cohn. Uh, where did this all come from? Tell me about the genesis of this project. The genesis. Leviticus. Um, <laughs> a lot of weed, you know. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm joking. Like this guy no, no, no. It's legal where we live, it's nice. No, uh, joking, sort of. Um, uh, most of my writing starts with a character. You know, I started with this character who loved his job. And it was kind of based on people that I've met throughout my life. I worked a lot of crappy jobs and, uh, you know, started with a character, started to build out some themes through there, and just wanted to tell a story of regular people, you know, people you don't often see on screen. Wanted to tell it through a comedy and a movie about race and class and the working poor um, that can just sort of shed light on some things in a nuanced and sort of not didactic way. So it was a long process, about a two years writing the script. and. Um, yeah, I'm excited to share the movie tonight. Well, Richard, you play a, a fast food worker who is uh, retiring, and you're training your replacement. Can you tell me, um, you, you and Shane, what, you know, what attracted you to these roles? How'd you make them your own? Um, well, uh, we're, we're kind of all we had. There was, a, it was, uh, there was the writing. You know, the writing. It's incredible. It's really great writing. Great characters. Uh, you know, actors are selfish. You read the pen. Mm -hmm, that's, is anybody else in this? No, just my part. <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, I love. I love the take on this guy. You know, I grew up in the, it's, the movie takes place in, in the Midwest. I grew up in the Midwest. Uh, um, and, you know, I knew these guys in school. And, and I just thought he really found that voice of these kind of lost folks. Shane? Yeah, I, w I would say the writing as well. Um, you know, just seeing that everything was on the page, all the nuances of, of you know, <clears throat> of what the character had to say. And, and also his character... Um, you know, Stanley was so quirky and and, but it wasn't over the top. It was very grounded in um, in his in his truth. And so, um, me just wanting to play with with that kind of character, and then Richard as well, and you know, wanting wanting to be able to to play with him, um, it just really excited me. It really did. And, and Dave Ian and Allison and Ed, where do you all fit into this story? Because unfortunately, I, I haven't seen it yet. Sometimes you got to do these interviews where you haven't seen the sure. movie. I can't wait to see it. I've heard good things. Um, but so how do you guys fit into the story? Well, when you see it, call me. I'll be in um, Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to make it tonight? <laughs> no, I'm from the Midwest, too. And um, I, uh, I know one of the producers, Ron Yorksa, and I knew his work. And... Uh, I know Richard's work, and uh, I talked to Andrew, and it just seemed like a good. Who, who do you play in the film? Ed? I play Dale. I'm. Uh, okay, I'm, uh, your best friend, his, Allison. Yeah. Um, I I play uh, Javon's um, like parole <laughs> agent officer. Okay. Um, and I get to come in just for a day and and play with Shane. So you get to play a little bit of a hard ass. No, not at all. You're she the, is cool she's officer. bright eyed and. Ready to help people. Very encouraging. Is she? <laughs> <laughs> and Dave, um, I play their boss. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at the fast food spot. Yeah. Now, have any of you guys ever worked a, like a fast food job or anything when yes. you were younger? I've worked every shit job known to man, pretty much. I mean, I think the the highlight of my shitty jobs were teaching drivers training. But yeah, I worked at Burger King when I was 15 years old. And I worked at KFC. Some of the some of the dialogue and characters are taken in the, the journey along the way. What's the toughest part of a job like that? Is it dealing with customers or is it sweating your ass off behind the grill? I don't know. I was 15 years old. Right, I was sure. so excited to work that job. I got my first paycheck. It was $75. I think I spent <laughs> half of it on like Burger King. In the place. I, I don't, it was like I had a paper route and I was like, I'm rich! <laughs> um, uh, Shane, I understand that your character, he has some provocative politics that have gotten him into some trouble. Can you sort of... Whatever. Do, what, what do you mean? <laughs> you, I, I don't know. Uh, can you sort of describe uh, w what those are and what makes your character, I don't know, kind of edgy? Um, you know, I think he, in the beginning of the film, just kind of passes off the blame to other people, mm -hmm. um, which, you know... A lot of us have a tendency to do at times, um, but I think, you know, as the film progresses, we see that he he learns to take accountability for his actions. He learns to step up to the plate, and in a weird way, 
I feel like he kind of gets that from your character, just seeing how much you bring, how much he brings to his, um, <clears throat> to his. I always thought you look at me. He goes, "I'm going to end up like that if I don't change." Well, it, was that too. <laughs> it was that too, but but I I think, you know, uh, he he just bring. It, Stanley is so committed to the job whereas my character comes in and is like what are you doing like this is not it's not that deep it's not that serious and for him it is but um yeah i think there's there's a lot of growth that happens with my character in that regard i feel like there are a lot of really smart people out there working low wage jobs uh, that they feel maybe you know superior to and, and i feel like they're going to they're going to be able to relate to this somehow yes well i mean we were saying earlier too it's like we want we want people to be able to look on the screen and, and say, oh, I know that person. I I grew up with that person or, you know, I, I work with that person. So hopefully they relate to it in that way. Um, uh, Davine, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about Dolomite. Uh, critics flip for your performance. Uh, and a lot of people felt that you were unfairly snubbed. Do you think that there's still like a, a Netflix bias uh, in the in the Academy or, you know? Uh -huh. what, what, yes. <laughs> Watch Richard, your answer. what do I say? <laughs> no, you You're love Netflix. You love Netflix. I, no, I do. I do. I love Netflix. Um, Ted, please hire me again. <laughs> Uh, but what exactly are you asking? Well, Do just I like, you know. Like, yes, she should have been nominated. <laughs> Do you think that there's that the Academy holds something <laughs> against Netflix or? Oh, I don't know. I guess that's like a, is that a joke or is it a rumor? I don't really know. I don't believe in it because I think Netflix, you know, employs half the industry. Yeah, yeah I think, I think Netflix drive is just to getting out as much diversified uh, content as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think they're really focused on quality. So if that ends up, at the end of the day, meaning that that then garners acclaimed projects, so be it. I guess everyone else just has to mm -hmm. step it up. I don't, I really don't know. I guess it's just kind of like, I guess it's the kid on the block okay. that's, that's that killing it. Answer. And so then everyone just has eyes on that person. Mm -hmm. But what I hope is that it changes the narrative for everyone across the board and that more people do diversify things, but I really hope the Academy is not making choices just because they have personal feelings about mm. Netflix. About the platform. Yeah, I yeah. hope it's the, the work. I think Ted's gonna hire you again. That was a good answer. That was a good <laughs> answer. Thank you, make sure he sees really this. Good Thank answer. you, I and love you, Ted. Andrew, is this your first narrative feature? Yeah, I've been doing docs for 10 years. Yeah, could you talk about sort of that transition, how this was maybe different for you? Uh, it's different, the same. Uh, I was surprised how well the skill set transition to be honest you know um same approach just trying to make the most honest choice you know trying to get the most honest um you know decision that i can make and i think when <laughs> one of the things that was fun about working with actors was i feel like i had a really good grip on being able to read body language and and really mm -hmm. do a lot of listening i think it's um as a director you want to you want to do more listening than talking and do you want to create a set where people can take risks and give people ownership over their um, performances and you know really collaborate? That's what was exciting for me about it. You know, making the transition. Um, can everybody list list off their favorite fast food joint? I'm curious. I'm from Texas. It's Whataburger, obviously. <laughs> what is it called? Whataburger. Whataburger. Yeah. Oh. Like what a burger! Oh. Someone's smiling back there. Hey, Texas, yeah. Arizona, yes. Let's go down the line. Ed, what's what's your favorite fast food joint? Uh, right now, In and Out. Okay. <laughs> I took it. Fair. I took it. You can. S I'm from LA. It's got to be In and Out. <laughs> it's got to be. That's cool. Uh, this is politically incorrect, but I'm gonna go with Chick Fil A. No. <laughs> and I, I uh, I'm a sucker for for Chick Fil A. We we don't judge here at Collider. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I see. My favorite fast food restaurant is um, Spago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't. I don't do the. And I'm vegetarian. Does like veggie grill count? Is yeah, that sure. Food? Why not? Veggie grill. Yes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to ask. Uh, so, Davon, you just wrapped Lee Daniels' new movie about Billie Holiday, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can say about that and, or the role you play? Um, I just did a movie with Lee Daniels. Um, it is about Billie Holiday. Uh, I think the working title is um, "The United States versus Billie Holiday," um, and so it examines the last ten years of her life. Uh, I play. Her best friend named Rosalind, who also was in her, I guess what would have been back then, like her glam squad. 
We did like her hair and makeup and stuff, but okay. we were childhood best friends. Um, and it's really cool and intense, and it shows um, an in-depth look that I think beyond what we kind of like generally know about her, um, and how the government had a hand in all of it. Okay. And, and Shane, did you just wrap Charlie Day's directorial debut? Do I have that right? Uh, not just, but I did, yeah. Oh, wow. I did work okay. with him, yeah. He's Any idea amazing. when we might see that? When you find out, you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I hope soon, though. I'm really excited to see that one. That was a really fun one. Um, Allison, we, we were catching up beforehand. I think I was one of your very first interviews. You were, back during Fargo. So, so like, I don't know. Like, I've sort of watched your career since then. Can you tell me about that journey since that first time that we sat down and, and this was all so new to you? <laughs> um, wow. wow, that's a big question. Um, yeah, no, I think... Uh, I mean, obviously, we went during Fargo. Fargo sort of like changed my life right. almost overnight, and so a lot has happened in the meantime. I get to do things like come to Sin Sundance now, which is super. Is, it, rad. is this your first time at the festival? My second time. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm still on Mars, man. It's still the coolest thing. I still am just really uh, just floating through it. And, and Richard, you're also here with Kajillionaire. Both of you guys are in Kajillionaire, yeah, huh? Both of us, yeah. Mm -hmm. very, very cool. Um, uh, can you? I don't know. Like, wh how was it working with Miranda July? I feel like she's a lot different than, than Andrew here. Extremely God. different. <laughs> he's he's taller. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she's. Uh, I mean, uh, Miranda's like Miranda. Miranda's. Yeah. She's like nobody I've ever met. Uh, and Andrew isn't either. I mean, we we. But it's. Uh, I really love working with her. Um, I love her brain. I love. Um, the story she wrote is like, where did this come from? You know, and, it, and then you, after about two days, you realize, oh, it came from Miranda July. I mean, she's really, really great. Um, that, that sounds like a fun one. Ed, do you think that they'll ever reboot Married with Children? No. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> quick, quick <laughs> answer. Microphone. You don't think, <laughs> you know, think it could, could fly in today's? Not uh, with me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You still look like you got those football moves, Ed. <laughs> oh, that's. Fair enough. Um, and Richard, are you going to be are you going to be filming Guillermo's uh, Nightmare Alley soon? Yeah, are you in there? I started about a week. Yeah. C can mm. you say who, uh, who you're, like what your role is? Who you're playing? Yeah, I play um, uh, a guy who's has has tons of money, but lost the love of his life when he was in college, and it was his fault. And he wants. Uh, Bradley Cooper plays uh, the lead. He, he wants him. He's a medium. And he wants to see his lost love. He wants her to forgive him. That's mm. uh, yeah. 